Like you yeah. just, you have to not accept that you can't do it. Right. Like I, I'm, I'm going to just keep working, you know, and I know that that doesn't always end in success. No, um, but it ends in something. It gives yeah. you something. Right. Hello, music lovers. Welcome to Why Music Matters, a podcast where we examine the power and influence that music can wield in our lives. I'm your host, Jeff Myers. Today's guest is Chris Bulldog Parker, the voice of Buffalo Sports Radio, co-host of the afternoon show on WGR 550, and our conduit to all things Buffalo Bills and Buffalo Sabres, for as long as most of us can remember. Bulldog knows sports, and his passion for our Buffalo teams knows no limits. But he's just as passionate about music and the role it's played in his own life, the lives of his kids, and in the broader community. Whether he's talking about the boundless athleticism of Bill's quarterback Josh Allen, or extolling the virtues of bands like Wilco and The Clash, Bulldog wears his heart on his sleeve, and that's why we love him. Thanks for joining us on Why Music Matters. Welcome to the show, Chris Parker. Welcome to Why Music Matters. Chris Parker, Bulldog, uh, my friend. I've wanted to do this since I started the podcast. I really wanted to have you on. Yeah, I remember. I because, got a, had a message from you a while ago. I yeah. Like, where'd, that, where'd that go? When, when I'm, when's my turn? <laughs> so I'm cool. Life, cool. life I'm super, happened. I'm super glad to be here. Man. I'm psyched yeah. you're here. Um, we've known each other a long time. We like an awful lot of the same music. We probably disagree on a few things, but that keeps life fun. So um, I've softened over the years. Have you? Yeah. All right. Now this we're going to have to get into. Yeah. But anyway... Uh, Everyone around here knows who you are uh, from WGR Sports Radio, Show Up in the Bulldog. Um, even before we started hanging out, you were kind of a friend. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, we had, yeah, no, we had some mutual uh, acquaintances. And you were a that, voice that I knew. Right, you know? right, right. <laughs> but like the, the the record theater days, yes. like we go back to that because my, my wife, Kirsten, yes. Uh, it was tight with a lot of the people that were a part of that scene. Yes. Um, Shout out to Eric Webb. Right. Right. John Weber. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that was sort of my way into knowing you eventually. I mean, there were also media uh, people that we had common friends with. Absolutely. That led to that, too. But, yeah. And we've uh, we've traveled that road since and, yeah. I guess, come to some similar <laughs> conclusions along the way. <laughs> yes. Anyway, I'm, I'm psyched you're here. Uh, I want to pick your brain about your love of music, which I know goes deep. Because I could, you know, I, I follow you on social media as well. And whenever you're like, garage, 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 <laughs> I know you need to, uh, I know you need to unwind and go to a kind of happy place. <laughs> Can you talk about that a little bit? Like, what is. Well, that, I, it's funny. Like, I still have to, I think. Uh, one of our mutual friends is Terry Sullivan. Yes. And, and he uh, he's not on social media a lot lately. I haven't seen him a presence there. But uh, when he was, he would glom on to the garage. The garage, garage, garage thing is a Sabres thing. Yeah. It's uh, like for people who don't know, um, get the game home safely yeah, and yeah. park it in the yeah. garage. Um, and – I think he thought I was just raving about garage music when I would when I when I would tweet that, which I always thought was very says, funny. Right, um, that's Terry. But, Shout out to Terry right. Sullivan, but legend. Every now and then, I still get someone like you know. Most nights, I'll get a, a person like, "What does this even mean?" What do you, and like, I I still feel a responsibility to explain it because it yeah. is pretty. You know, if you have no idea what's going on, like what are you talking about here? But that's it. Like, get home, get home yeah, safely. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. unless you're up by four, if you're up by four or more, there's no stay out all night. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, do what you want. I mean, put, you know, don't hurt anyone, uh, but just you know, have at it. I love it. <laughs> um, and also, if anybody follows you on social media, we uh, we're often offered glimpses of some very cool vintage guitars. Um, and your, your clear love for them. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, that side of you? Like what's your history with, with music and playing? Um, um, 
I'm I'm uh, I'm a below average uh, <laughs> guitar player uh, for sure. Sorry, my glasses are fogging up a little bit. Um, de- definitely, bl- but I love. I grew up uh, as a kid <laughs> drawing motorcycles and guitars on my folders in you know middle school, uh, and you know I work in AM radio in Buffalo, so collecting motorcycles was not really going to be up there and of course guitars can be i i don't have i have volume what i don't have is like a like a guy you know it's like the star of the show like this is the ten thousand dollar yeah yeah i mean we did get my son leo plays and that was a part of my interest in it too was that he got interested in it and that sort of you know so i had for a while i had a goalie that was a sinkhole financially just you know the gear and all the stuff like well, the kid likes guitars. I guess I, I have green light to like just <laughs> buy guitars for him and me. Um, yeah. We did get him a really nice '61 SG reissue with the vibrato. It's really like that's the Cadillac, of, but it's not even mine. It's his. I've you know? seen it. Um, so I don't know, man. I just I always I, I had a guitar from when I was in like college, like the first time around, food service college. Um, I bought. What turns out to be like a 69 Aria lawsuit era Les Paul copy awesome. off a guy for 25 bucks. Yeah. I mean, and it was beat up. It had nails for strap holders, right? I mean, just. Yeah. It's a Jack White guitar. <laughs> um, and before the, the uh, collecting bug really took hold. Uh, we we met a, a, a guy in Canada through our, for a while we had a, a, a cottage up in near Crystal Beach. Yeah. And we met a guy that uh, eventually divulged us that he like collected guitars and plays guitars and builds and like rehabs guitars. So once we got to know him a little, I sort of brought him this guitar. I had no idea it was an Aria, what era, nothing. Just was a, you know, just a punk of junk basically, yeah. right? That I learned to play, you know, brand new Cadillac. Yeah. On, right. Cool. I gave it to him. He had it for so long that I thought he forgot I gave it to him. And then he brought it back and it was like. It's mint, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, like that was one part. And then I just, I don't know. I just wanted something to do. I think it's really healthy to, uh, even at our advanced age, yeah. to develop. Yeah, we're both 40. And, the, uh, <laughs> to have the ability to like learn a new craft. Yeah. So I never knew Jacks. I, I I could play Ramon songs, yeah. right? The simple bar chord stuff. Yeah. Um, and I just thought, like, I, I'm gonna just do this. I want I want my kids to see me learning to do a new thing. So we started collecting guitars, and uh, I started playing a little more. Like, you know, I can play okay now, but yeah. I'm still you I'm not a guy that people, can, yeah. I'm not a guy that can walk into a room of people playing and like just jump in. Yeah, you know, like, hey, Dude, take let's one, jam. Like, yeah. uh, ah, take one, what? Take one, what? <laughs> take a shit. <laughs> I got to do nothing. You don't want me to take anything. Uh, but it's super fun. And um, it's been it's really, you know, my friends with Leroy Towns are mostly responsible for it, uh, like getting me out there. Yes. and Which has been really cool. It's really see, fun. You know? And I, I've only just now, it's been, I don't even know, 10 years maybe more. Um, I think the first time I played with them was at the Sporto for a Steve Earle night. Yeah. Um, and so over the course of 10 years, like now I actually enjoy it. Yeah. Like for, for like eight years of it, be like, oh my God. You're nervous, right? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I better have a drink. Oh no, I had too many drinks. Oh no. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, you got to find the sweet spot. Right. There. And now, now, like now it's just very like, okay, this let's is go, cool. Let's I go got do this. It. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that, I mean, that's super fun. Um, but really, I mean, I just like, I, I just like, I like looking at them. Yeah. The guitars. I like yeah. thinking about them. Um, it's just a, it's a their really, art. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I guess, you know, at some point you know, we've got maybe between me and Leo, maybe 50 guitars. Um, wow. I didn't, re- that's, and I, I guess, I hope my wife is listening well, to this so she <laughs> yeah. no longer thinks well, there, that I'm over well, the top. <laughs> as he, as he progressed, in, in, you know, in his ability, uh, he's, he's got stuff that he has s- stolen, uh, like just stashed in his room. So yeah. like, they're all not, anytime you see a picture or a video of the room, my, the attic music room space, yeah. they're all not up there. There's like a yeah. dozen scattered around the other floors of the house. Um, so, um, yeah, I just, I just like guitars, Yeah, you know? So 
you know, at some point maybe it might be smart to turn in four or five of the sort of run of the mill guys and like to upgrade to one, like just get like some really nice mint bourbon burst Les Paul, but but then you have to worry about them, right? So I, and, and I like and it, there's then there'll be empty space on the wall, right? So like what would happen if I did that is I would not all at once, but like over the course of probably a few years, I would just replace the ones I sold anyway. So a better idea is to just try to. I don't know, win like a four-leg parlay on FanDuel and I'd, then buy a Les Paul. <laughs> it's a great the business FanDuel. model. That was going to work out great. I like that business model. That's <laughs> hilarious. We're all going to Vegas, baby. I'm going to gamble my way to a nicer guitar. But, uh, kids, right. uh, don't try that at home. Yeah, this not, is a, this not, is a joke. That is not advice. <laughs> no, don't, don't do it. Well, what about like getting into music? <laughs> I, know, I know you like... And this is real generalization because I'm sure there are things we've never talked about that you're into. In fact, I just saw something you put on Twitter Twitter about Echo and the Bunny Man, and I'm like, I didn't see that coming. I'm yeah. a huge fan. Yeah. Are you going to the Buffalo show? Mm-hmm. That's pretty yeah. special. Yeah, I jumped on that immediately. You had to. It's yeah, so right. low. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I yeah, I go back to um, I mean, I saw them in the student union social hall at Buff State. Um it was before I was even in Buffalo, I mean, and I, I, that's a legendary early show. Early '80s, I don't, yeah. I don't know, right? Them and Let's Active, Mitch Easter's thing, oh, so right? Cool. That was he was REM's original. Yes, um, I, I that same that room, thing. I saw The Cure, uh, Black Flag, X, lots of other people played. I, those are the ones off the top of my head I can remember seeing in, in you know the Student Union Social Hall. It, it, incredible. So yeah, it, and I've seen them, you know. Since then, when they sort of broke bigger and they did like a bunch yeah. of shed shows, yeah. uh, the Cure, same thing. Like yeah. I've seen them in bigger spaces, um, so I'm excited to see them again. Echo yeah. and the Bunnymen, How in, cool. a, in a, and I'm excited to see that room. I haven't been in there yet. No, I haven't yet either. I, I wanted to go last week but couldn't. Uh, I was a little but, yeah. conflicted about about. I, 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 the room. I very much am. You know, supporting the room. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I consider Donnie a, a great friend. Donnie and Artie. Yeah. Uh, Donnie cuts back, Artie Kwitschoff, who yeah. have been here for Buffalo through yeah. thick and thin and yeah. brought to us things that we wouldn't have had otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. The, the War on Drugs, as an example. Come on. Like, as that band was just breaking, like they right. played the ballroom. They still can't uh, believe it. Because they're, they know what's going on. They right. have great taste. Right. They brought us a lot of stuff. So I don't feel great about like how the, that. Bi- I know you've written about it. I, I read every word. Um, you know, uh, the business model is a little intimidating. Yeah. Uh, what what the that new venue is doing. Um, so, but it's echoing like the bunny man. I, mean, I know. You know. I'm going to see Matthew Sweet too. To go. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, when when you were getting into music, I, I guess where I was going with that initially was I know you love like roots music, Americana. You know, very yeah, broad yeah, yeah. umbrella. <laughs> Punk rock, mm-hmm. you know, but and, and obviously, you know, your roots in alternative music, like when alternative music was breaking, you yeah, know, yeah, early '80s. Were you going to Buff State then, or were you just going to the shows? When those shows were happening, I was I was maybe at ECC uh, for food service, um, and I finished that off, and then just sort of got lost in the in the world. Yeah, uh, so I had an apartment in what is now the Elmwood Village. Back then it was just the West Side. Right. Um, And so, you know, as part of the Continental, that that whole alternative punk scene in Buffalo. And so Buff State was a part of that. Radio station. WBNY was a huge deal. Yeah, and all the shows. So it still is. That was how, and it wasn't until, you know, years later I moved away and then came back and ended up going to Buff State for uh, broadcasting, which is why I'm so excellent at this now. You are. Uh, <laughs> You're fluent. So, You're the man. Um, so, yeah, no, but when those shows were happening, I was just a, just a, you know, just a kid from the neighborhood, basically. Yeah, which is so cool. But what what were you into, like, when you first got into music? Like, what was happening? What, what? I- what did you hear that you're like? I know I'm going to be listening to this album for the rest of my life. Man, there's just so there's so many. I, I don't know when it first started that I would have been oh, like aware that I'm going to be with this forever. Um, but you know the Allman Brothers Band is probably cool. my first favorite band. Amazing. Uh, you know, Stones. My I have a I have two sisters, an older sister and a younger sister. The younger sister and I really uh, bonded over the Stones. So that's a big one. And then, uh, and, and you know, my folks <laughs> love that the the country stuff. Like yeah. I love all the old the classic stuff. Like I 
I took them to see George Jones yeah. when he came to UB. Like, I don't know, was that King? King? What a voice. <laughs> um, so, and, and my, my folks, like that's, that's, you know, we'd go on, we, we were the family. We'd go to any, any place, like a mu- we went to Opryland like four times. Oh, how cool. Because they just love country music. Did you realize like, how lucky you were? I mean, yeah, that's right. Cool. I mean, I saw Waylon Jennings in that in you know the, that what was at that time the Grand Ole Opry, yeah. the room that housed the the new one, not yeah. the one downtown. Right. Um, like you know, whatever. I'm 12 and I'm seeing Waylon Jennings. Like, pretty awesome. Yeah, you don't um, forget that. So I give them. You know, they 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 took us out to see. You know, even if it was like in an amusement park, we were the family that was going to every show, yeah. like every you know, like Dixieland, whatever it was. Like, oh, twelve forty, we got to be at the gazebo theater. So what? Cool. You know, we just want to go wait in line and eat cotton candy and ride log flumes. But you know, oh no, no, the big band show is at noon. You know? And as a kid, I I probably didn't love it, but but now like, you look back yeah. though, like wow, yeah, <laughs> I was lucky. Sorry, that's. <laughs> You fogging up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, since you were raised that way, you know, once you became dad, did you guys want to carry that on? Oh, like, God, yeah. So, talk about that a little <laughs> bit. I mean, I know we share that in common, too. Yeah. You know, that we took um, uh, my kid and your kids to, to everything that we were interested in to, sh- to show it to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I'm a part of the reason I think. Um, I, I bonded so easily with my wife is that she's of the same. Totally. You know, like, let's get, get, get them out there. Like, let's just go. We get, you know, uh, there's a beer tent at a lawn fade and Jack Dawes playing. Like yeah. the, the kids are three and five. Okay. Well, let's go. <laughs> you know? Like, um, and yeah, no, I, I really, I mean, I, I guess I just wanted to do for them what my folks did for me. Yeah. It's, it's big, you know, yeah. and you know, in my head, it's like, well, I, my stuff's cooler than my parents' stuff was, but whatever, it's all, it's all good. It, it's yeah, all it's, it's all just passing it on, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, and then you know, and obviously, kids now grown and have a have a passion for music. I mean, yeah. they care about it. Yeah, talk about you know watching that develop. I mean, I've got you, this is so so much. Um, <laughs> he, he, the 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 guitar player Leo is yeah. uh, twenty now, um, and he like we I was starting to play uh, a little. His older brother started to play a little. This this guy John Gale, who I mentioned, the guitar rehabilitator yeah. guy. Uh, so you know we had you know, fires outside. You know in the summer at this cottage we used to have, and uh, Leo just like he, he just what could wasn't prepared to do it. Like he just couldn't do it. And he, at one point like came to me and said like, daddy, can you show me it's like something? And like, I showed him a D, a D yeah, chord. There you the go. Easiest chord you could play. I think, right. <laughs> I, 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 you know, whatever. Um, and he just couldn't, his fingers, he just couldn't do it. That fucking kid worked every day. I love seeing that. And now just, <laughs> I'm sorry. It makes me cry. It's emotional to me that he, he did that. It's awesome. And like dude. now I can't even play with him. Like he's so just beyond. Like I, I don't know what to do. You're, what are you doing? I go, you know, yeah, blow my mind. So, um, you know, I guess it took. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'm- <laughs> dude, I, you are in, in the right place for that. Cause I'm like this too. <laughs> you know, I remember watching, I think he was doing a Zappa tune or something. And I'm like, that's when I knew I was in trouble. Yeah, I'm like, whoa, okay. And he's into Zappa. Like, yeah, that's never been my thing. Like, it just doesn't, it doesn't click for me. Like, yeah. I, don't, I, I can hear it and I can appreciate the ability, but it just doesn't, you know, doesn't make my dick move. You know, what I mean? like, it just doesn't <laughs> get in there like other stuff does. Yeah. Um, but he, yeah, he's just, yeah. I mean, he did this thing at school, Muffin Man. That was just, yeah. Like, I love that what too. What's even happening? Did so, that with Terry once. Yeah, <laughs> Speaking nice, of Terry. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he got, he got hooked. I mean, it wasn't all like, I mean, he, he did the work to get to a place where he could at least be accepted into, um, there were, he was at tapestry charter school and Joe Mafood ran, yeah. uh, uh, I don't know if he still does even, um, 
ran a guitar program there. And he took Leo in. And from there, Joe, like Leo, I, I don't I don't know how quickly he accelerated, but Joe was super supportive of Leo. Um, I went looking for a, pr- a private teacher for Leo outside of school. Yeah. And we tried, you know, a couple different, you know, Joe suggested a few different people and just hit or miss, couldn't make it hook up. And like as a, I don't know if it was a last resort, but like maybe the third or fourth guy he suggested to me was Jared Tinkham. Oh. He said like, you know, just call call this guy and see, you know, I'm sorry these other guys aren't getting back to you or whatever. And Jared is the guitar director at Bath Performing Bar. Arts yep. School, which yes. you know from. He Dutton. was my son's teacher of course, too. Yeah. yeah. And um, he took Leo in, started giving him lessons just to prepare him for the audition to get into the school. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, worked with him for four years of high school, awesome. uh, which was just incredible. Yeah. So, like, you know, he he didn't, you know, he he did the work to get to a place where he could take the steps to do what he's doing with yeah. Jared and Joe. Um, so, like, you know, all I did was show him how to play a D chord, and he just kept yeah. But it. you opened the window. Yeah. You know what I mean, and that's yeah. what happens then. Right. I know what you mean. I can't keep up with my kid anymore either. <laughs> I try, yeah. you know, but. And it, it, that's kind of what we were hoping for, yeah, isn't it? Right. you know, in whatever they were going to do yeah, in of life. Yeah, yeah. But music is a yeah. is a great way to get to that spot. Yeah. Definitely a shout out to Jared Tinkham, who um, I think has left such a uh, an imprint on a generation of musicians, and it's you know yeah. an ongoing thing. In, in addition to being such an, a fine musician himself, yeah, he really. He got those kids so engaged in it, you know. And and I mean, Leo was there for two years worth of pandemic. Yeah. Um, oh man. And so, so we, you know, the the shame of that is we missed out on a bunch of shows, right? Because the you know, people, if your kids want to go to performing arts, support it. Go if for nothing else, the shows. Like if you if you're a parent that ha- has dreaded going to your kids' assemblies. <laughs> Admit it. Come on. Um, th- this is like a whole nother level. No question. Over there, man. Like, that is craft. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And I, you know, we did, I mean, we were just outside of, you know, Buffalo, like Snyder, like on the, and so we paid tuition for Declan to go to, to wow. performing arts. And I don't regret any of it right. because it's just incredible, man. Yeah. I mean, the, and I remember before the pandemic, I can remember seeing Declan come yeah. back to like a Christmas show yep. or something, whatever, and like the the support system and how proud people are to have been a part of it is just uh, it's awesome. It's really incredible. That's so Buffalo to me. <laughs> yeah, know, it really is. Right? Yeah. I mean, you've spent your a good portion of your life, you know, digging deep and analyzing sports, um, and we're grateful for it. You know, I mean, there's <laughs> you know. It, it's hard to be a sports fan in Buffalo, but it's also glorious. Yeah, what you know else what are you going to do? What, well, hey, what, well, play guitar. Yeah, of course. I guess. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Write music. For therapy. But, yeah, right. But, yeah, uh, you know, you've been a, a, a companion for for so many of us. But, you know, during that time, I mean, do you see, you, you talked about Leo dedicating himself to something that did not come immediate and naturally to him at first. Right. You know, th- obviously the correlation with sports seems to kind of be right. there. I mean, if you, do you see that? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, his brother went through the same thing as a goaltender. So, well, climbing uh, through far. the mix, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. So, um, yeah, no, they're, yeah. Like from a, I want to do this. I can do this. I'm going to will it into existence. Uh, just by doing the work, um, yeah, they're very similar. Uh, I think it takes the same mindset. Like you, yeah. just, you have to not accept that you can't do it. Right. Like I, I'm, I'm gonna just keep working. You know, and I know that that doesn't always end in success. No. Um, but it ends in something. It gives yeah. you something. Right. You know, maybe you, even if it's not something you can take to the bank. Right. It's character building. Right. Oh, for, for sure. You. Yeah. And then the idea of being part of bigger something bigger yeah. than just you. Yeah, no, for sure. Our, our Owen, Leo's older brother, the, the the goalie, the former goalie, like definitely is carrying around what he learned. You know, you you know, as a nineteen year old, you get in a Nissan Pathfinder and drive to Albuquerque, New Mexico, to play hockey in the midst of a pandemic. 
you go through some shit. You definitely do, <laughs> you man. See, you see some stuff, uh, and you learn. Yeah, and it's stuff you take with you. Yeah, you know, which yeah. I love. Yeah. Um. Well, you know, somebody who's been <clears throat> observing and and you know part of really this this Buffalo community, this music scene here. Um, I'm wondering what your take on it is. You know, it. I haven't been everywhere obviously but it's different here than in a lot of cities and i think part of what's different is the idea of like mentorship um nurturing young talent you talked about jared tinkham and and performing arts have you observed that in the buffalo music scene do you think i mean at least in your exposure to it um i think so i think even even going back to um uh, you know w- the, the bands I knew in the, in the eighties. Yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't know as many people in that scene as I know and say like the sportsman's Americana scene right. now. Um, but it, it didn't seem cutthroat or, uh, like I don't know, competitive. It, it, it was competitive. Like everybody wanted to blow everybody else off the stage, right? but it was supportive. Like everybody yeah. went to everybody's shows. You know what I mean? Like, and it wasn't like if you like the Splat Cats, you didn't go see the Femmes. Totally. You know what I mean? Like, it, like it was, boy, is this show ever sounded older? Is something we say on our radio show all the time. But like the Splat Cats and the Femmes, I mean, holy crap, <laughs> that's it's going, so great. Going back a ways. Um, so it, it, it the, and there were so many different styles of stuff. I mean, right within that, I mean, yeah. w- whatever the Femmes exactly were, the Splat Cats were Art definitely punk. over yeah, there, totally. like not, you know, in a totally different place. Um, but it was the same scene and s- supportive. Um, yeah. and I definitely like that, that now, um, you know, the, 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 the people I know, Leroy Towns, Uncle yeah. Ben's Remedy, yeah. that whole, that whole group of bands, I mean, they're it's not exactly interchangeable, but like the, the, any show you go to, someone from the other band is going to be doing something with them. I you love know, that. it's just like this very communal thing, which yeah. uh, I think it's it's you know very healthy. I think for artists because you feel support if you know there's 50 people there and you were expecting 300. Yeah. Well, at least I've got my people here. Yeah, your people, your peers and colleagues. Yeah, right, you know, right. you, yeah, I've definitely witnessed that. And too. I don't know. Um, I mean, I was only in New Haven for two years, and I, you know, I played in a couple things there while I was there, you know, badly. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't, I never got like a familiarity enough with the whole scene. Like I was, I was always it. a tourist. To, yeah, you know, I, I so, um, you know, but that, that, but that's like a that's a city that is sort of in the shadow of New York City, and right. like everybody's just trying to get to New York, and it's just a different thing. Like here. I don't think it's as much settling. It's just the reality is yeah. like th- there's a ceiling and maybe we're at it and like, let's just work our jobs and enjoy this and enjoy one another and enjoy the shows instead of like, Oh man, we got to get like, uh, you know, I don't even know what the, how the model works anymore. Like yeah. what is the music business? <laughs> I, mean, I don't even know what the hell it is. Anymore. Nobody knows. Um, so, it's not that there there aren't aspirations, but I I just think that there's a there's a comfort in where you are and the reality of like I'm going to live my life happily here and not be disappointed that I'm not in Los Angeles or right, whatever or someplace where yeah. you know like someone's going to walk in the room and go like oh let's are you gonna you should I want to pay you some money to make right. music like right. I don't even know if that happens anymore. It does. It, it just doesn't really happen here, but it right. does happen. Yeah. Quote out there, you know. Yeah. I mean, location. So I don't know. I mean, what do you think of that? Like how I describe that? Is that I, accurate, or is I, it because I, I don't want it to sound like the, the that's uh, not negative. If right. you're okay, that's, that's it. Doesn't right. sound. I don't want it to be because that's not how I mean it at all. I no, I know. Clear. Yeah, but but like, I think I, it's a positive. It is a positive, and you know, I would get asked this or like go on a speaking engagement or something, and people would like often be like. You know what do you do here to take it to the next level? And um, you know you, you never want to be negative, but I said if you want a life in music and you want to live here, you can have one. 
it will be a rich one, a rich in experience. Right, and, uh, right. It will not necessarily be rich in opportunity yeah. beyond. But you can play music here seven nights a week yeah. to an audience. You can live a life in music, and that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. However, you know, be realistic. You're going to have to have a day job. You have to have it set up so that you can make so it that work. you yeah. can do that. And I think if, if not, it's funny, like I, I have friends um, who I don't know how long ago it was, but I, I can remember being at a show. Um, I won't mention the band, uh, and my my friend like oh, yeah, it's great. Like, 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 how big are these guys? Like, what I'm like. Well, that guy's a garbage man, and that guy's a painter, and that guy's a this, and that. and it sort of blew. And my friend, these weren't like clueless people, but they weren't like in the scene as as well as right. I was. Right? They didn't know these people. They see them play, and that's it. And I think in their heads, they're like at a bar watching this band play, and like they make a living doing this. Like right. that's fucking hilarious. I'm not that's even funny. close. Yeah. And I like that I know that going in, so that when my kid gets interested in it, I'm like. Well, you better, yeah, you, fine. You want to play music? Excellent. Excellent choice. How are you going to make that happen? Yeah. Right? You got you to gotta find a way to make that happen. So he's going to trade school. Yeah, that's awesome. And music can always be a part, right. you know. Right. And so, you know, without that knowledge, you might, you know, we might have naively just like, well, just work at it and get yeah. in a band. And, right. You know, we, like, oh, my God. Like that just seems like a fairy tale. It's it, it, it is a fairy tale. It, it is now. It's a different yeah. thing, even than when we, you know, yeah. let's say when you know in the '90s when we were <clears throat> maybe at the peak of our clubbing, <laughs> et cetera. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, there was always the like, well, the, the Goo Goo Dolls made it, you know? right? Right. Well, the Goo Goo Dolls didn't make it by just playing in Buffalo. Very clearly, they yeah. toured like crazy. Dude, you know, you got time for a, one, one quick Goo Goo Dolls story? Well, let's hear it. I, um, I mean, obviously, was there. I, I, I think the first time they played in front of people was at a house party that I was at on Minnesota Avenue. Well, My friends, I know friends those were the roots, right? Yeah, um, and it was just you know what's even happening here and so you know ground floor with them right um while i'm living in connecticut this is like 88 to 90 is the two years i'm there they're touring on jet which is yeah. their second record yes. metal blade records yep and they are playing in new london connecticut the lng club somewhat of a legendary club out there anyway um what and, what would you compare it to size wise around Nietzsche's. buffalo okay um it's similar to like bar in the front, deep, long room, room in the back. Yeah. The room is a little wider, not as narrow, but similar vibe. So it's like a Saturday night and my girl and I drive down there early and we're hanging out with them. They're, they're living in a box van, like tour, you know, touring, yeah. you know, a couple mattresses in there. Yep. Luckily, New London is close to a Navy base. They've got friends. So they're crashing uh, at, at the Navy base for the night. So they don't have to live in the truck for the night anyway. But this show they're playing at like, you know, I don't know, seven 30 or eight o'clock. And there's like some sort of Bon Jovi type band that's playing at like 11 or something. Right. So they go on, there's people like it's sitting, it's almost like a dinner theater type okay. of scene. Right. All far back from the stage, people sitting at tables with cocktails and like, wow, this is what a scene this is going to be. Like, you know, they, they play whatever. Because there's a blazing punk rock right, at that point. Right, right. Yeah. I don't know what they opened with, right? They played one song. Robbie's singing a lot of the yeah, tunes. Yeah, and you like, know. you know, nope, we're just standing like far back watching. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Johnny, they already had wireless crap by then. Them. Unless he unplugged. I don't remember. Anyway, I just remember him walking off, leaving the stage, coming down and ripping the tables, drinks and all, out from under people and dragging them up to the front. That's awesome. And nobody got mad. I love it. Man. And they won the whole room over. Yeah. Again, 50 people. But yeah, but it's like, what kind of balls? It's it's huge. That and one, 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 like, one brick at a time. Who too. are you? Yeah. Right? You're just tipping over drinks in a biker bar in New London, Connecticut. Like, you, you're gonna listen to me. Yeah, I love that, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and that feels very Buffalo too. Yeah. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, 
I like the way you describe the scene here because there is just a a beautiful opportunity to, you know, stay here and enjoy like an incredible musical culture and you know culture in general. Yeah. Um, but but the expectations you need to be realistic as well. You know. Yeah, I think you nailed that. No, I thanks. Think. <laughs> um, you know, over the years we've, I've uh, come on the show a few times, and we would be doing these like, you know, music based drafts and yep. and like the Mount Rushmore of rock, and we had a lot of fun doing that what stuff. Did we do band draft? No, so band sing, draft. Singer sing, was it singer? I think draft? we had to pick our whole band, but I know I do remember the singer one. Yeah, and I think. I don't remember who you picked. I do remember. I think I picked Joe Strummer. Yeah, you did. Is who I wanted and for I did, my. I got, yeah, yeah. It, mu- it must have been vocalist draft. Yeah, I, th- I think. Anyway, yeah, and this yeah. stuff was fun. Yeah, yeah. So you know, to me, I'm like your audience. You know, your audience. Do people love that kind of stuff. You know, the sports audience. Were they into the music stuff? I mean, it it it, it it's hit and miss. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I I take pride in um, like every now and then I get it's it's fewer now because he's so big now that like you, if you're interested in music at all and you don't know who Jason Isbell is, I don't I, yeah. I don't know where you're living, right? But that's someone that I go you know all the way back to his time in the drive by truckers, truckers yeah. playing at Mohawk, Mohawk Place, Place, right? Legend, <laughs> um, and then him solo playing at Mohawk yeah. Place, yeah. and like now he's where he is. And every time, whenever, if I tweet about him, uh, like a video from his latest tour or anything, I, I'll get all, all person. It only has to be one. Like, thanks. Yeah. For turning me on. Yeah. Right. I like that. I love that, dude. This, this stuff is. Uh... So, you know, in, in what I do, there's always going to be like. Uh, nobody cares. I don't yeah. care. Shut up. Why aren't you talking? I mean, and look, we're all like that, right? I turn on the radio and I, like if I turn on Toronto radio and I want to hear something about the Leafs and they're yeah. talking about the Raptors. Yeah. You're annoyed. I have a reaction. My <laughs> reaction is I don't want to listen to this. Right. Like I don't write a letter That's uh, or send an email, but, but my reaction is to get out of it. Yeah. So in what we do, we have to be careful of not pushing any of the other stuff too far yeah. because you don't want to alienate the audience that's there for what, what the objective is, which is to talk about the bills and the savers. Yeah. So, you know, I, we try to be careful about that. Yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, I feel like it's so much a part of what we do Yeah. that, um, you know, to, to eliminate it entirely would be ridiculous. Yeah. Um, you know, cause I, I, I think, um, you know, a lot of our uh, success is is due to us being like who we are. Yeah. And you know, to think that you're only interested in this one, you know, however wide sports caught a swath, it, 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 there's still a lot more out there. There right? is. Yeah. So um, even in Buffalo, you know, we try <laughs> to just bring that. And you know, so um, it welcomed. Yeah, I mean, it's n- nobody tells me not to do it. Yeah. Like I've never had a meeting where the boss has like said, Hey, you know, you spend a little too much time talking about, you know, war on drugs today. Yeah. You know, it, cause it's, we're, we're smart enough to know, like it's, it's a few minutes, you know, at the end of a segment, something like that, you know? So, and I love the, the support I get, um, you know, when I post, I don't do it as often as I used to. Um, but you know, listening to records and just uh, on on social media, like here, here's what I'm listening to tonight, and I, I just love the interaction. I get. Uh, I love that, and I, I've loved following you um, when you do that, and I've been surprised. Well, like thanks, or, man. I think you know, um, I think recently it was uh, Steve Earle's Guitar Town. That one didn't surprise me, but then there have been other things. I think the Chameleons. Um, Things that I was like, cool, man. I yeah. didn't, you know, I'm not surprised, I guess, but I didn't know. You didn't know that I had a 80s gothic uh, streak. Love it. No, the, I uh, didn't. Right? I, I did not know. Right. And I was really happy to know because yeah. I do too. I mean, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. we like a little bit of everything. But that is really cool. We talked about uh, Donnie Cuts Back in Town Ballroom. Donnie does that sometimes too, you know, when he's 
Yeah, so he's yeah. got the vinyl and he holds yeah. up the album. That's the post. But people connect with that, right? Because yeah. we've all had this in our lives and they're like, that's something I share with this person. Right. You know? And like not everybody has that relationship with music. Right. Where, you know, they they uh see someone listening or find out like really, really what, what we're talking about is people seeing on social media what I'm listening to or what you you know Donnie's listening to. And a lot of people, for other people, who cares? Who cares? I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, there's but a lot there of are, there are people out there, out there that are, are going to go, oh, man, I love that record. I, I remember listening to that record back in college totally. or whatever it is. And it. Connection. Yeah. Totally. I love that. And, you, you know, I had to learn this over the years, too, through journalism or being in the public and all this kind of stuff, is that, you know, a lot of the people who think it's really cool aren't the ones who are going to come. Oh, of course not. You know? No, that's how, that's how, yeah, that's, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, that's, you don't do this for 30 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah that. exactly. Like, that's just how it is. Yeah, it's just what's going on. Um, I wanted to ask you quickly about what your thoughts are on how music is used in sporting events. Like, I've we've seen over the past few years, the Sabres really – have made an effort to sort of involve the music community in, yeah. you know, at least with bands playing yeah. between yep. periods. And, and like I, the last game I was at, I don't even know the name of the band. I wish I did. I, sh I, I wish I'd caught it. It was not, it was definitely to me way outside the boundaries of what they normally have. Like some, somebody up there playing cover songs. Right. Like it was interesting. Yeah. I'm like, what is even happening here? Like, this is so cool. Like, I, I think I kind of want to listen to this. Band, yeah. You know, like not just, you know, I right, just, all right, wrap up your, you know. Yeah. Right. Whatever your, your covers, your, your yeah. version of uh, whatever. I don't need to <laughs> demonstrate <laughs> anyone. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Nothing against that. No, that, no, that, that, everything just, serves its purpose. But man. yeah, it's just, you know, mostly what you're there is you're expecting to hear cover. And this was like, sort of like, jazz fusion jams that were like no no singing yeah like, wh what how cool <laughs> yeah right? right at the sabers and, game. yeah and i, yeah. I kind of i tip my cap to the sabers for doing it you know i uh i get a, it, it, the same night um owen and i were sitting uh during the second period and during a break a song a song came out i recognized it instantly and uh the chameleons, you mentioned them, had yeah. been on my mind because he – here's a moment of discovery. I went up in the attic one day while Owen was up there with a friend listening to records, and he's listening to this chameleons record. How oh, cool. Like, what the hell? He's like, oh, I love these guys. I'm like, okay, wow, I didn't know. So we're sitting next to each other at the hockey game, and this song, this big drum intro, intro starts, and it's building. And I'm, in my head, my head went, chameleons? But it was – it wasn't. It was – I want to be adored by the stone roses. Awesome. At the Sabres game. And I'm like, I mean, know, that's not exactly a mainstream. I mean, they were a huge band in England, totally. but like, you know, not like we were into them. And yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, all of us, right. but that was really for like, music. Like pre, people, yeah. pre Oasis, yeah. Brit pop, like awesome band the stuff. What is this doing in the second, during the second period of the Sabres game? Like, I, I think about that. Like who's up there? Wait a minute. That's not like, thunderstruck. I used to know, <laughs> uh, you know, Bud Redding. Yes. Bud had that job for Shout a out. long time. Yeah. Um, so like, and, and I knew that. And so like, you know, I heard Magnificent Seven by the Clash during yeah. hockey. I'd be like, yeah. oh, Bud, yeah. you know, now I don't know who it is, but somebody, for some reason, decided to play this Stone Roses tune, and I'm like, the percentage of people in the arena right now that know what this is, even is probably in the single digits. Yeah, but cool, but cool, yeah, different, you know, right? And um, so I don't know. That wasn't exactly how music is used in sporting events. I don't think. No, but, but I mean, well, well, do you have thoughts on? I mean, you know, a lot of people say that basketball, NBA games are like it's just super obnoxious, constant barrage of sound, and some people totally love that, right. you know. Like I the mean, bandits are kind of like that. There's yeah, a lot yeah, of, there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot going on. Yeah, bells and whistles, and right. it's loud, and right. you know, and yeah. that's cool. But I wondered, you know, if you had any thoughts about that. I mean, or is it just like uh, we're here for the game? You know, does it matter much? I, I um, it's funny, man. I I, I think I want to say I don't need any of it. Um, and there probably was a time when I was younger that I would have had a stronger take for you about it, like yeah. a hot take about it. Yeah. 
um, a very old man yelling at clouds kind of thing, <laughs> probably. Um, but it's so much a fabric of what the experience is now uh, that it's it's hard to detach from it, right? You, yeah. Like, oh, I don't need all the stuff. Well, you know, all the stuff, there's more than just the, the sounds. Like, it's the video and it's the, right. you know, when I, when my son was playing, you know, pretty high-level hockey here, I'd be watching the game like in person and something would happen and my instinct would be to look for the replay. Yeah. Around like, but you know, I'm at the rink at Nichols. They don't have a video board, bro. <laughs> and like, it's what 7 a.m. Sunday. But like in, in my, in, like, I mean, and this happened almost, it would still be happening now if he were still playing. Yeah. Like I'm sure of it. Um, you know, unless he graduated to playing somewhere where there is a video board, which, right. you know, was in the window for a while there. For definitely. Anyway, it definitely was. Uh, I, I'm sure I'd still be doing it. I'd be looking like, because, oh, that's a, that was a really great save. I want to see the replay. I don't have a replay because right, I'm, <laughs> I'm in a local rink idiot. So what does that, what does that tell you? That tells you like I, I have an expectation yeah. that it will be there. Yeah. And then if it isn't there, I miss it. Um, so I think it's it's easy to say like I you know I'd like it to be I don't need all this stuff I don't need the contests and all the junk but if you went to a game and just sat there and there was none of that stuff you'd notice it not being in there. a second yeah. you'd feel like you lost an arm yeah. I think like really yeah, it's just so real. omnipresent that to remove it is I think I don't know I mean you could do it but it seems impossible yeah so love it um Last thing I want to ask you about, I guess, is uh, I don't know if you've encountered, you know, any athletes who whose taste in music you learned about and maybe were surprised by a little bit, or you know, I mean, things are she, the the goal songs for the Sabers, for example. Right. Some of it, I was like, oh, you know. Jeff Skinner's hilarious. I right. Mean, I get I, I don't know what you're doing. I definitely noticed Tage Thompson going with the nitty gritty dirt band I, for a while there. That was I was like, like whoa, whoa, I didn't see that coming. You know? And I mean, even in the day when um, you know, when my son was young and we were just so such a Sabres family, and you know, we were hockey parents, you know, um, and going to tons of games. And, you know, I was through working at the news, I I ended up getting to know Ryan Miller a little bit, mm -hmm. and and um, you know, learning that Tony Ludman was like a death metal fan. We had, this just came up on our show a couple of weeks ago. Oh, I don't know why Ludman came up, but he was a super cool guy. Yeah, I ended up we, jamming we, with them at one of the catwalks. Awesome. We it mentioned great. like it came up, and I I said I even said to Mike, what what do you remember most about talking to Tony Ludman? And he paused for a second, and I said. Death metal. Yeah. He lo was in, like, we For talked real. about, I was like, I don't know how I found out ahead of time, but I did. So I knew to ask him about that. And, like, it's not, that's not a genre I am super familiar with, but it was pretty cool to get to ask an NHL player about his love of death metal. It's so cool. <laughs> I, I get a huge kick out of it. Yeah. But I, you know, do you think, like, with the goal songs and all that, I do think people kind of, get into that a little bit you know they think it's cool you can you can get sure, the playlist that, on yeah. spotify you know, yeah. speaking of the devil but <laughs> yeah you know yeah i don't know i get a huge kick out of the kind yeah. of connection there well i i um the late bruce de haven was a yeah. uh special teams coach in the nfl for many years uh and was for many years with the bills uh and when i was first coming up um and going to training camps in fredonia when they were there yeah. And I would like stay down there for two weeks at a time during camp to do my show from there. I got to know Bruce. Um, like he, he was just super generous and nice. And um, I don't know, just took a, took a, a shine to me. I, I don't know why just, you know, I was just starting out. Um, but sitting around talking to him, he loved music yeah. and, I remember him being the first person who ever told me about Whiskey Town and Ryan yeah, Adams. Yeah. He had seen them opening, I think, I hope this lines up, for the Allman Brothers at some point on some shed tour or something very, like, I never before, saw that, but it makes sense. Obviously, before Whiskey Town, you know, broke apart. Right. He, he saw them. He, it, whatever. He saw them somewhere in a, you know, some of these shed type shows opening for someone. I think it was the Allmans. Anyway, um, and he just like, look out for this Whiskey yeah. Town. And, you know, that turned out to be like a, 
ground floor band and, and artist, you know, for me. Yeah. Um, he was prophetic until, you until, to, you know, whatever I sort he, of, I, I don't grab the records anymore. I don't know. We've got friend, we're, everybody's all over the map on that. Yeah. I have a hard time. I loved yeah, I know. Man. I can't, I can't, I, my Kirsten doesn't care. Like she still, like if she has a chance, like whatever, like she picks something when we're out on, on a boat or something, she'll put on, um, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, awesome. um, I don't ever pull the records out. I stopped too. Yeah. Like I, it's sort it's sort of like if a guy on your favorite team, you know, gets arrested, like, are you, you know, for something do you want to like, you want to you want to catapult past that or you know does it change your relationship with that and for me that's and I, i've always kind of felt like the 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 artist i mentioned isbel like yeah. rooting for these guys and, and and women too rooting for these artists is like rooting for your team totally so their success is like yay team yeah yeah right? you feel it yay wilco excellent right um so if you find out like and that's not knowing how huge of assholes any of those people could right. be without me knowing. But if I now know that you are that, then sorry, that's that a changes, hurdle. That yeah. changes the equation for me. I it, can't. It does.